All right, guys, so here we are at Walmart. Due to popular demand, people are always saying, Nate, can you let us know what are some off-the-cuff, offbeat prepping items that we can find at Walmart? Well, today, we are gonna go shopping and we are going to act as if SHTF is but 48 hours away. Scrap that, let's do 24 hours. SHTF is 24 hours away. We got a few hours to get everything we need and the only place we can shop is at Walmart. Let's go and check out what we can find. Always low prices and always low quality. All right guys, so here we are at Walmart. Let's go see what we can find. Usually we're not gonna be shopping for food at Walmart, but we're gonna give you a few ideas in this respect. So let's go see what we can find. One of the primary staples everybody's gonna want is going to be rice. Typically this is something you probably wanna buy from a wholesale food store or even a Costco. But if you can get yourself a 40 pound bag of rice like this, right now this costs $36. Another thing that's gonna last a long time is instant coffee. So if you can find this stuff on sale, obviously, you know, beggars can't be choosers. So we're not gonna do the $16 Tim Hortons stuff, just too expensive. If you can find a generic instant coffee brand that's freeze dried, it's gonna last damn near forever. Generally speaking, in the best of times, you want to stick to the periphery of a grocery store because that's where you're going to find the most nutritious, fresh produce. In times of preparedness, you want to stick to the central aisles because that's where all the stuff with all of the preservatives that's meant to last a long time, that's where you're going to find it. So if we're prepping, we're sticking to the central aisles. If we're focused on health and uh, everything is fine, then that's when we're sticking to the periphery. If you guys ever seen the movie Zombieland, these were in high demand. Woody Harrelson spent his lifetime looking for Twinkies, so we're gonna get Twinkies just for the hell of it. You wanna avoid this sugary stuff because uh, it's not gonna be good for your brain. You're gonna crash. Now, most canned foods have an expiration date. It's actually a best before date. So this is not actually when the food goes bad. I've done videos on the true shelf life of foods. This canned food is gonna last for probably many years after the best before date. Technically, it's not even for legal purposes, it's more for the store's inventory, but just be mindful of the fact that as delicious as this Campbell's Chunky Soup is, it only has around 250 calories. In order to sustain yourself, you would need eight to 10 cans of this stuff per day. So always look at the calories. Craft dinner, absolutely terrible for you, but there's a lot of calories in here, okay? So we got about 800 calories for about $1.50. That's about as good as it's gonna get. Probably the only better deal you're gonna get in terms of calories is going to be something like this. So for 30 cents, you're getting 400 calories. The good thing about these is that it doesn't require a lot of preparation. This flour, if properly stored, will last 20 years. Love it or hate it, it's gonna last damn near forever. The main ingredient is pork, water, modified potato starch, sugar, and sodium nitrate. So uh, another option is this cooked ham, which also is gonna have an incredible amount of sodium, 24% for one eighth of the can. This one can has twice the amount of sodium that you need in a day. That is part of the reason why it's gonna last so long is because it's salted to hell. So yes, absolutely. So once again, avoid the periphery of the stores unless you are going to have a plan to keep your food frozen. Uh, it's best to stay out of these aisles if you're looking for preparedness food because of course, it is all stuff which is not gonna preserve. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. We all know what's gonna go first because our society is preoccupied with number twos. What people forget is that you're gonna need the food to make this useful. But yes, absolutely stock up on this stuff. 
because we're used to it. We're gonna probably have to go back to using corn cobs or whatever the hell they used in the old days, grass. If you can get it, get it while you can. I think that this stuff is gonna be worth its weight in gold. There's just so many uses for aluminum foil, from cooking to preserving items. So definitely get some of this stuff. The Ziploc bags are gonna be very useful for just preserving food in general. Not necessary, but definitely gonna be useful, right? Paper plates can be useful for a short-term emergency. They're gonna be good because cleaning dishes in an emergency situation is probably not gonna be an option because water is gonna be in short supply. Heavy-duty bags for sanitary purposes, disposing of waste, a variety of different other applications, preserving things, making shelters even, making uh, makeshift rain ponchos, you name it. Garbage bags are always useful. You can get some bleach. This is good if there's some sort of contagion spreading and you want to clean things, but uh, the problem is it has a very short shelf life. So it's only gonna last for about six months. So we're gonna actually find something better than that when we get to the pool section. So this is the only item that's food, that's edible, that actually legally requires an expiration date. So this baby formula expires in 2025. Technically speaking, however, if this is all you had, a lot of this is just milk powder, I presume. Milk powder has a shelf life of around 20 years. So technically speaking, if you had to, and this is not advice, but uh, you know, if this is all I had, then people are gonna use it. At the end of the day, it's all about survival. So, gonna get a couple of those. Vaseline, because you're probably gonna be single in the apocalypse, but also because it has a variety of different utilities from lighting fires to medical applications. Dry skin for the fancy boys out there. So if we're talking about a grid down emergency, we're talking about low access to medical care. Even if you don't have children, the fact that most people don't have the discipline, the family plan, and uh, I'm not saying I'm guilty of this, but I am. <laughs> You're gonna wanna have stuff for infants, okay? Whether it's bottles, you know, these, these are just gonna make great items that you can use for people who might not have prepared and have children. If you are a parent and you have to go somewhere on foot, having something like this could come in handy. I have a backpack one at home. It's like this dude here. This could be a low cost surveillance solution. I've never actually looked into it for anything aside just being a baby monitor, but there could be a very low cost, constant surveillance solution, which is not dependent on the internet. So that's definitely something to consider. I know a lot of you are gonna to wanna to stock up on dog food. Definitely important, but at the end of the day on a long enough timeline, it's quite possible that the dog will become the food, just a fact of life. Sorry, Marshall and Baxter. So these portable speakers, you can use them in conjunction with apps on your phone that can be used for game calls. So you can use them for hunting applications. You can use them as decoys. So I'm thinking about a situation where let's say your home is being raided and you want to attract the attention of a would-be aggressor. You can utilize one of these systems in order to call them into a certain region of your home in order to get the jump on them. And they range from, you know, 20 bucks all the way up to 100 bucks. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. In fact, the more pocketable it is, the better. Something like this might be good for just keeping your kids distracted. Uh, you know, if there's a lot of stuff going on or you have to have a lot of adult conversations, just getting them something like this that they can utilize in conjunction with some media player, that might be something that's good to have. Can't go wrong with batteries. So a bunch of these. These ones are good. They have a 25 year shelf life for the lithium. You could get something like this and load it up with various different types of media. You know, put it in a Faraday cage, load it up with different types of survival and preparedness information, and then just put it away. And it's a lot of information on a very small memory stick. Just remember to put it inside a Faraday cage or some protective enclosure. This is probably gonna get you killed when shit hits the fan. So at least up until this point in time, I know I sound like a hypocrite because I got the Oculus glasses on, 
but I don't think augmented reality has a lot of uses yet when it comes to survival and preparedness. But there may come a time when this is going to be a bit of a force multiplier. As of now, it still isn't. Getting yourself some sort of surveillance system. Uh, this is the only system I see here. It's 400 bucks. Don't even bother with that. Get yourself a couple decent cameras put in very strategic locations and then just get a bunch of decoys. When the iPads run out of power forever, you're going to need an alternative. And what better alternative than the fart explosive card game? Fast, flatulent, fun, wild hilarity. My kids are gonna love that. Little analog methods of amusement like this are going to be useful. Some kind of portable flotation device like this could have a lot of applications in a survival situation. Even a kiddie pool like this can hold over 400 liters of water. Now, post-apocalyptic commuting, it's not going to be without its set of challenges. But when the fuel runs out, you're going to need an alternative. And what better alternative than a little girl's bike? An e-bike is something you should give serious consideration because it's something you can power via solar and you don't need a huge solar array in order to power it. They're quiet, they'll run even if the battery runs out, and they can go places that cars cannot. This is just another example of a portable flotation device. This is a portable raft. You can throw this in the trunk of the car should you ever have to cross a small body of water. Work gloves can be an absolute lifesaver. I recently infected my finger. I had to use my emergency antibiotic supply in order to treat it. This wouldn't have happened, of course, had I had gloves on for the activity that I was conducting. So if you can get a good deal on these portable gloves, get them while you can. Even though exercise is not gonna be on the top of your priority list in the apocalypse, if you have to hunker down for long periods of time, one of the cheapest and most portable ways that you can stay in shape is going to be resistance bands. Now this is the camping section at Walmart. Now I could easily just fixate on this aisle here and make the whole video about it. But the whole point of this video is to practice outside the box thinking. So while everything within this aisle is gonna be useful for survival and preparedness, I'm not gonna talk about a whole lot here, but we will talk about a few things. One thing I would recommend stocking up on is fishing line. I would also recommend buying the bulk sized fishing line. I personally like the braided fishing lines because in addition to using it for fish, you can also make bowstring out of it. You can pick up these miniature propane tanks for your heating and cooking needs. However, I would strongly recommend getting more bang for your buck by just getting a larger propane container. You're going to save a lot of money. This is cast iron cookware. This is something that's going to pretty much last forever. And the reason why this was so popular in the 1900s is because in addition to providing you with cookware, it also increases the iron content of your food. This right here is a lantern. Don't underestimate the utility of something that can diffuse light in a open space. Make sure you also pick up a few headlamps. These are gonna be great because it's gonna allow you to free up your hands, which may be very important. We have some other no-brainer preps here, like this cheapo camp axe. It's gonna be very low quality, but it's better than nothing. We have a light straw for water filtration. We also have a fire starter. Kerosene is great because it's less volatile. It has a longer shelf life, and it can be used with your kerosene lanterns. It's an excellent preparedness fuel. Everybody should have a little bit of this stuff kicking around. In Canada, having a portable jump starter lithium battery pack in your vehicle is a no-brainer. These thermal reflective window shades, which are made of a foam and mylar material, these are great for doubling as a insulated air mattress. WD-40 has 101 survival uses. You will not regret buying it. Here we're looking at some various hazmat applications. So we got safety glasses, and we even found some chemical safety gloves, which I was actually surprised that they had something like this at Walmart, so I picked up a pair. Some portable toilet system is gonna be essential, especially if you have to bunker indoors. Normally, I would go with the military-grade scepter cans, but because we're at Walmart, we're limited to the civilian stuff, it's better than nothing. Have a way to store fuel. If you're gonna get duct tape, you might as well get Gorilla Tape. It's just a bit better than normal duct tape. Pick up some super glue while you're at it. It has a variety of different applications, including suturing wounds. If you can find a good motion powered solar light that is very bright and very reliable, I would encourage you to stock up on these. It's not a complex install, they run forever, and they don't require an electrician. Spray paint can be very useful if you have to, say, leave a message somewhere, if you wanna write something, 
very large spray paint or even normal paint for that matter can be good. You can use this to camouflage and disguise certain things. So get a few cans of spray paint, it just cannot hurt. These furnace filters are also multi-purpose. You can use them in conjunction with those box fans in order to create your own air purifying system. You can also use the actual fabric in the filter. You can actually use that to make masks that are going to be impenetrable to viruses. Something like this is a great signaling device. If you have to get the attention of somebody who is miles away, this can save your vocal cords, okay? So definitely consider a auditory signaling device like this marine support horn there's not a lot of weapons in here but you never know what you can find in the sporting goods section nothing like a good old louisville slugger to the head this is definitely the kind of propane tanks i would recommend uh, if you can't even get the bigger ones but these are good because they're man portable once you go bigger than this depending on how strong you are they're hard to move around, but that's a decent amount of propane that will heat your space, a small space for a few days. Carbon monoxide is gonna be a problem, especially in the winter time if you're using combustibles in your home, whether they be gaseous or solid fuels. But everybody should have a few of these in their home. Good old fire extinguisher. These things, I must say, they're pretty awesome. Uh, we have one at the shop, holds all kind of batteries. It's called the Battery Daddy. So these are good for spraying various things. You can make your own homemade pepper spray. This is a great way to project that over a long distance. We've shown you how to do that on the channel. Uh, they're also just good for if you have to decontaminate a space. So you could fill this with a bleach solution and you're gonna get a long spray and it is gonna go far. This is what City Slickers this is how they get scammed at Walmart. I mean, five bucks, no, nine bucks for a tiny little bit of kindling. I mean, that's the biggest ripoff in here. This is literally cost them five cents. The markup on that, never ever buy wood from Walmart. I will say, however, that these in viral logs, they last a long time. You know, there's something to be said about that. Something like this is a great way to store water. Solar panels on here, they're very small, but something like this could even be used as a makeshift torch and could provide a small amount of illumination at nighttime. These can work in very small enclosed spaces, but don't rely on this for the deep woods because you're, you're gonna need DEET, okay? So bug spray, is what you're gonna want. Food preservation and pests are gonna be a problem if the grid went down. So having some way of neutralizing these threats is going to be absolutely essential. Something as simple as killing a wasp's nest could be very difficult. So having pest control agents is something to keep in mind. So this kind of stuff is gonna be worth its weight in gold, okay? If people have to be outside doing a lot of outdoor work, and the bugs are really bad, that's gonna be a great barter item. So this is not actually not a bad deal, nine bucks for a big candle. This is gonna last a long time. These things, when combined with uh, Vaseline, make excellent fire starters. Something like this has pretty much everything the body needs to survive. So honestly, if I had to come into a place like this and grab as much nutrition as possible, I would load up on a lot of this stuff. For all you soy boys who are going to wet yourself when the shit hits the fan, get yourself some of these. As for medicine, I'm not going to say much about this because we've done all kinds of videos on medicine. Go to Jace Medical for that. Seeds are going to be worth their weight in gold, especially ones that have like nutrient calorie dense foods. Definitely stock up on vitamins. They're going to last a lot longer than it says on the container. Triple antibiotic ointments. If you can find this stuff for the eyes, usually in droplet form. Blankets, yeah, I mean stock up on blankets because if you live in the north in winter time you're gonna need a lot of blankets. This idea I got from the Urban Prepper. If you have a lot of valuable stuff and you want to keep it in your vehicle, get one of these kids bags and put it in there because nobody is gonna take a kids bag because typically there's nothing of value in a kids backpack. Some sort of uh, analog paper organizer 
is going to come in handy just for keeping track of the days but also keeping track of various things like the weather you know sightings of various wildlife definitely something to invest in is a lot of these portable calendars in terms of writing nothing quite beats a pencil in terms of reliability all you need is a knife to sharpen it and they're still relatively inexpensive if you wanted to protect certain documents something like this thermal lamination paper might not be a bad idea this cart is getting heavy can't go wrong with these definitely canning jars absolute must-have this is a good brand, Canadian brand, Bernardin. We we'll actually sell those at canadianpreparedness.com as well. This is probably one of the most underestimated items when it comes to post-disaster preparedness. Underwear, it's gonna run out. Just get extra underwear. A base layer for the winter time is another kind of underwear you're gonna wanna consider. This is a generic winter rubber boot. Anything outdoors, rubber boots are absolutely essential. In terms of socks, you know, disregard this low cut shit and actually disregard these socks altogether. You don't want cotton socks, you want wool socks. So I'm ready for the apocalypse. Thanks to Walmart and China, we're good to go. Let me know what your prepper item recommendations, things I might have missed. Let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and oh yeah, let me know what store you want me to do next. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at canadianpreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk, and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget the